Russell Roney for me and for you. I'm excited returning to the show. One of my favorites, Jace Carr. How you feeling? Good, man. I'm uh, hurting a little bit. Been pretty busy. Uh, knees a little banged up, but I'm getting through it, getting some good rest this week, and uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Glad to see you back. You've been very busy. You just hit the ground running, didn't you? Yeah, ever since I came back, it's been pretty wild. I've been wrestling at least three times a week, four or five. I mean, last week I wrestled five times. Um, so, you know, the injuries come with that. That's more than most WWE wrestlers. So <laughs> we're out there working, too, you know, as independent wrestlers. And I know that I've been traveling with a lot of people, Cal Hook, Paul, Jason Hendricks, uh, obviously facade as usual. And, um, you know, we're just... We're just getting it out there, trying to do the best we can. Wow, what a crew. Hell yeah, you're in good hands rolling with those folks, huh? Absolutely. It's been a pleasure, you know. Besides, obviously, everybody knows that he's been the guy that uh, has always been there for me. And he's, uh, you know, one of my best friends in real life and in the business. And, uh, you know, I, we've been through some shit, that's for damn sure. <laughs> It's been awesome to see him in VCW as well. Let's go ahead and go into that. Uh, just a couple of days ago, you you beat Cowpoke Paul in VCW, bro. Like, that's huge. Dude never takes an L in VCW. How do yeah, we feel about that? Yeah, it seems like that mother... Am I going to swear on that? Oh, for swear away. Have <laughs> at him. It seems like he is, uh, you know, he doesn't take a lot of L's at all. So, like, that was huge for me. Um mm -hmm. That was big, and it's about damn time that the Mississippi Dirtbag gets a W, especially over Cal Poke Paul at VCW. You know, that's uh, that's a big W for me, and that's kind of the turning point of, you know, where I'm going to be going from now on. You know, it's uh, it's I think it's my time now, finally, and uh, I put in the work, and it's about time I get some recognition for it. Good on you, man. It definitely shows they have faith in you if you're beating Cal Poke Paul, so I was happy Absolutely. to by hook or by crook, I was happy to see it. Also, Jace Carr, Kill City Cup is our sponsor. How'd I forget? But we got the plug out there. It's really awesome. I highly advise. It's America's most badass tournament. Maybe we can get you in the next one. Hell yeah. I've heard of it, and uh, yeah, I'd love to be there. Let's, let's make it happen. Speaking of uh, things outside the box, I'm loving Nukin and uh, T2T, seeing you pop up up there. What can you tell my audience about what MV's got going uh, in New Ken with 880 and T2T? Um, I mean, it's amazing what they're doing there, honestly. Like, uh, Steel, Steel City Killers is first class of people. Mm -hmm. I was I had the pleasure of having a lot of their first matches. And, um, you know, Nick's Wild and uh, some other guys that I, I was there when they were first brought in. And, you know, it's a pleasure to work with them every time I get to and to see those guys grow. It's it's why I'm in this business right now to begin with, just to see these younger guys uh, really start to understand what's going on. And they're starting to make a name for themselves out of Pittsburgh as well. They're going up to Indianapolis a lot, and uh, it's so cool to see them. And just the atmosphere at 880, man. I mean, it's one of the best places to wrestle in Pittsburgh by far, just because of the atmosphere. The fans there are electric and... Uh, Every time you wrestle there, you know it's going to be fun. That's for that's for sure. For sure. Hey, last time you were on the show, you were in New Ken as part of RSW. Back then, we called you Jeremy Colbert. So yeah, what? What true. can you tell me? What happened? What happened between here and there? So, I mean, it's been it's been a rough. You know, like we talked about it last time that like I've been through some addiction problems with alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, it's a major battle in my life and unfortunately it interferes with wrestling sometimes it's interfered with a lot of like it's no joke man like that stuff has uh taken my life in a lot of different directions and you know i've had a lot of sober time but this time you know uh i i messed up and uh i was doing the jeremy cobra thing and i really loved it that's my real name uh, i'm sure everybody knows it by now but like um i kind of I don't know, man. It, it, I relapsed and I fell off the map for there, those six, eight months. I also had a really bad concussion, so that didn't help with anything. Right. I've, had, I've had a lot of concussions, and that's kind of, if you notice, 
why I've changed up my style a lot. Um, okay. You know, like I'm not, I don't have to do these fancy flips and stuff to hang, hang with these guys. I'm bigger than most of these guys. So I don't have a problem just kicking their asses now. Um, right. And, you know, I think I'm starting to show that and actually become the wrestler I want to be. Um, you know, there's no problem with the guys that are flipping around and stuff. That's great for them. But, but fortunately at my age, the, I've been a pro athlete, you know, I played pro baseball before this and I, uh, I've, I've had my injuries, you know, I'm not a young buck anymore, so I got to settle it down, but I'm still ready to kick ass any day of the week. Um, it's just going to be a little different this time. And, you know, coming back from the addiction and the relapse, it was a long road for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gotten a little trouble, you know, that's the way it goes, man. This thing, it, it kills people and it's unfortunate. And I'm a big, you know, I've worked in rehabs when I had sober time and I, I know recovery inside and out. And if there's any up, anybody out there struggling, I know there is, um, please feel free to reach out to me. I know how it works. I know, you know, relapse has happened, man. Um, mm -hmm. This thing is forever. If you're, if you're going through addiction, alcohol problems, whatever it is, it, it's serious. And, um, but don't, don't give up just because of a relapse. And I think that I've shown that like just by coming back and, uh, you know, and switching to Jay's car, which kind of gives me a little bit of a separation between real life and wrestling, because this stuff, this stuff can take over your life for real. Um, right. if you let it, so you gotta have that balance and I'm starting to get that. I'm very happy with my life. I'm very happy wrestling right now. And, uh, everything's going really well. I'm glad you're in a good place, man. We all slip. We're all human. I appreciate you being open about that, but Hey, you're back, and in my my mind, like you don't have to do all the flippity doo dah and super athletic stuff because you've got character. You're back to your shithead ways and pissing people off. Uh, how therapeutic's that been to come out and just yell yell at these idiots? I mean, that, uh, that's the way, that's just what I was born to do. You know, right. I, some people like it, some people don't like me. I don't really care. I come out and I perform every single time and i'm one of the best performers honestly in the ring i think i'm one of the best in-ring wrestlers in pittsburgh if not the east coast right now and that's a that's a legit thing for sure could, there's things i could work on for sure and i'm gonna keep learning there's so many veterans around pittsburgh that i love and help me out so much um that i i keep learning every single day right. from this stuff but there's you know the there's not going to be a person out there that tells me I'm not, you know, ready to go in the ring because I'm always ready. Oh, yeah, it's obvious. Uh, recent match that springs to mind, uh, the match with Facade in VCW a couple months ago. Obviously, you and him's close, and there you are live on, you know, pay-per-view. What can you tell me about that one? Um, I mean, Facade, me and him have had our battles, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've wrestled all across the country against each other so that was another match that like every time i wrestle with him it's really like uh it means a lot to me because you know this guy you're talking about a guy that should be in the wwe should be in AEW, should be somewhere on tv and he's just getting kind of fucked over to be honest with you and it's uh you know it's one of those things that like nobody understands why he's not on tv and every time i get to wrestle him it's like i get to progress to a new level of you know, rest. I've learned so much every single time. The guy is, he's the best on the Indies by far. Um, but, you know, the hottest unsigned talent that there is. I've heard veterans say that. I've heard Blue Mini say that. I've heard, you know, ex WWE guys say that about him. And every time I get to get in the ring with him, he kicks my ass. I kick his ass. But, and we come out a little scratched up. But you're guaranteed a good match when that happens. And uh, anybody, anybody that, you know, has seen us wrestle, knows that we're going at it, and he kicks the shit out of me, and that's how he got the W again. If you guys watch the the uh, clip from BCW, it's pretty pretty epic. <laughs> oh, oh man, you guys, you did, did you knock the shit out of each other? It's a good one, and the guy's been at such a high level for so long too. It's not like he just got good as long as I can remember. You know, probably fifteen years, just so good. So, props okay. to the sod. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. You weren't going long, but when you come back, 
maybe even hit up some new companies. I'm not sure. But did you notice any changes in the locker room and wrestling product, various promotions you work for? What can you um, tell me? Yeah, I mean, you know, coming back from something like that, it's uh, I wasn't very public with it this time, you know? No. I, I tried to keep the addiction part of it to myself, but, I mean, everybody found out anyways. You know, it's part of my story, and I'm not worried about people knowing anymore, you know? Hell it's yeah. Something that, I'm something, it's something I'm proud of at this point because right. I've been able to fight back and fight back and fight back and get up and land on my feet every single time. And, yeah, in the locker room, you know, there was some uh, – there's some difficulties for sure, but I'm not that guy. Like, I'm not the guy that's going to start drama. Everybody that's met me knows I'm pretty relaxed in the locker room. And, like, I'm just a chill guy, and I don't want any heat with anybody. And everything that did, that there was some tension. Eventually, we figured it out. I talked to my, you know, I talked to the people. And everything's all good now, which is nice. And that's the great thing about wrestling is, like, once you're part of the family, you're always part of the family type of deal. Right. Um, as long as you're cool. You know, just, uh, I never meant to hurt anybody's feelings by doing this. It was an issue that I had to go through. Right. And, um, and you know, the fact that other people had to be pulled in because I did miss some shows. And people had a lot of plans for me. Um, and I own up to that. That was, It's all my all my fault. Um, that's obvious. It's just I can't communicate it better in certain situations. But, you know, we're past it and we're moving on and uh, everything's going well right now. So. Hell yeah. Yeah, and that's the important thing. We're glad to have you back in Real Shoot. It's always good to see you at RSW. Uh, For sure. we, we got you coming up on the 9th at RSW? Yeah, wrestling an 880 boy, uh, Brandon St. James. And, uh, that kid can go. So it's going to be a fun match. Um, Believe me, I could still do the flippy stuff. Everybody right. knows that I could still do it. So if some young kid's going to try to do that to me, I could still do it, even though I'm 225 pounds right now. I'm a yep. freak athlete, dude. I'm a freak <laughs> athlete. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, you're. hey, you were moving against Cowpoke. I could not believe the pace you guys kept up. Props uh, to man. that. Yeah. To be honest, good on Cowpoke because, like, my knee is completely busted right now. I'm wrestling a lot and trying to rehab it. And I was wrestling on one leg um, that whole match. And we still were able to keep up the pace. Wrestling with Cowpoke, you know, that guy, that kid can freaking go. And uh, it was crazy that I beat him. And I'm very fortunate to be kicking in my groove and, you know, realizing that I could beat these guys. But, you know, Cowpoke can go with the best of them. Man, he, that kid's a freak. No doubt. Oh, yeah. One of a kind for sure. How long has the knee been busted? So it, it's honestly just from there's a bursa sac in your knee, I guess. Mm -hmm. And if you irritate that or bust it, it's just like a, it's something you got to rest. And uh, it's painful sometimes. Sometimes it's not. You know, it depends on what I'm doing. Right. Um, Resting on it's not the funnest thing, but I'm getting some good rest this week, and I'll be back this weekend, you know, in full, you know, as much health as I can be. Sometimes as wrestler, we get a fight, fight through these little, in I mean, it's an injury, but, like, it is what it is. We got to fight through, and that's something that, like, I think a lot of wrestlers have forgot about. Like, these wrestlers on the road, like WWE, AEW, they're fighting through injuries all the time. Like, right. I'm, allowed to do it. I'm doing it, too, so, like. And I know a lot of people that fight through injuries. Like, it's just part of the game. Yeah. And props yeah. to y'all, man. Yeah, it's tough biz. Oh, that's what I hear. That's what I hear for sure. Where else have you been popping up? We know about New Ken. We know about VCW, RSW. I've seen you some other places. Where you been? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to Voltage this weekend. It's a, They're nice. actually in Martinsburg, West Virginia on Friday. But mm -hmm. they run they run out of like uh, lower Pennsylvania a lot too. Great company, great company to work for. Um, there's you know there's talks about other things. Uh, I might be going back to uh, check out OBW, see what they're doing again. Hell um, yeah! I know they're coming out with a documentary soon, and I'm excited to see that. And uh, it's going to be on Netflix. So um, if there's a season two, maybe I'll try to get a part of that. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Worth a shot. I know I know a lot of folks that's going to be in that series, so why can't Jace Carr be in the season two? Yeah, I know my boy Jason Hendricks is starting to get in there, so 
maybe I'll have a trip down with them, see what happens. But yeah, just trying to, you know, stay loyal to the guys that I need to stay loyal to. RSW one, RSW is a big one. Tim's Tim Cross has been there for me through all this stuff. Um, he's never said a word. He's never had a bad word to say about me. And uh, it's time to repay him and uh, get some good matches for him going. So that's what I'm pretty much focused on right now for this year. Um, just staying local, getting my group back, and then we'll see what happens next year because I think it's going to take off. For sure. I'm looking forward to the RSW work since you got something to prove to Tim and you're already good. So that'll be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You mentioned uh, Jason Hendricks. That's a big fan of Jason Hendricks. As soon as I spotted him first time, I said, kid's going to be a star. Well, what can you yeah. tell me about Jason Hendricks? Well, I mean, if you ride with me on the road and people know who ride with me on the road, you're going to be a star. That's just the way it is. Okay. Uh, Cole Carter, Cal Pope Paul, Jason Hendricks is next. Right. Uh, that kid's got a brain like a sponge. He... Uh, takes every piece of advice he's given to him and he's starting to blow up. I mean, his character's great. He's a great worker. Um, the kid's got a lot of potential. His ceiling is super high and uh, he's still young too. So I can't wait to see what happens with him, but it's going to be big. That's, I mean, that's just a guarantee. Yep. We're both calling it right here, right now. Guarantee it. Watch. Refer, Absolutely. refer to this. Who else? Who else is going to be, uh, who else the fans going to be talking about down the road? I mean, there's tons of talent. Like, uh, like I said, Cal Pope Paul, his ceiling's extremely high too. Like, mm -hmm. like it, it, he's still like 22 years old. He's partying, he's loving life, but he's gonna he's gonna go big places. That's a guarantee as well. Um, there's other kids. This Matthew Yeager kid that's coming up through. Yeah. IWP. Um, I'm wrestling him at RSW soon. He's gonna be great. Any any of the kids from 880, mm -hmm. um, they're gonna be good soon. The kid I'm wrestling on the ninth, uh, St. James. Yeah, uh, that Polish guy from uh, Cause. I, yeah, now he's good. Whoa, yeah, we got him in RS. That was, I think you were at that show. You were at that show. That match he had with Krizak. That's who he fought. That was so yeah. good. And he's been coming to eight eight zero a lot too. Nice. And, uh, you know, I I said when I came back that, that you know I'm getting older. Mm -hmm. I don't have I don't have as many years as these kids do. And I understand that, but like I have a I have a lot of knowledge about this game, and uh, I just want to help these kids. That's all I want to do. And people say that all the time. And like, what else am I gonna do? Like, maybe I'll go to Japan or something cool. AEW, right. something cool might pop up. But right now, I want to see the the kids that are working their asses off go. And you know, you have to prove that to me um, as well. If you guys are hitting the road and stuff, then you're one of my guys. If you're not, if you're staying in Pittsburgh, good luck. Hell yeah. And it's awesome that you're in that spot where you can do that. When you were these kids, who was in that spot for you? Who looked out for you? Facade. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Facade and Danny Moe picked me up right away and got me on the road. Um, I love wrestling in Pittsburgh. It's great, but there, you're not going to wrestle four times a week in Pittsburgh. Right. Uh, you got to hit the road. You got to learn. Like, this game's all about learning. Yeah. Um, and you can't learn wrestling one match a month. You just can't. Um, and, uh, you know, when Facade took me under his wing from the very start, we hit the road. And I wasn't even wrestling in matches yet. I was just hitting the road with him to see, just to meet people. You know, networking when you're first starting. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. huge. Like, even if you're not going to be put on the card, I still do that. If I'm not going to be put on the card and I just have to go to a show in the middle of nowhere with Facade or with, you know, somebody, I'm still going to go. Chances are you're going to get on the card, but, you know, you're if you don't get on the card, you're still meeting people. That's the key, and that's a lot of work. That's a big dedication. Like, um, if you want this, like, there's a bigger – you have to be doing every single thing you can every single day to make it work. Now, do I do everything I can? No. I wrestle as much as I can, but there's social media aspect. There's these podcasts. Um, there's so many things that you have to be doing at all times that I, I'm not good at either. I'm good at going to wrestling shows and wrestling, but like promoting it and stuff like that, like I need work on that. And, uh, you know, I don't even have t-shirts right now. It's, it, there's so many aspects to it that you have to be on point with to be a great wrestler. 
on the independent scene right now that uh, it really takes up a lot of your time, you know? Yeah. And Facade's, you know, speaking of Facade, Facade's one of the experts at it. He has, you know, all this merch, and he's posting on Instagram every single day, multiple, multiple times a day. Mm-hmm. That's how you got to be. And uh, Cowpoke does it too, you know? There's get, there, Some of these guys are getting it. I'm unfortunately not internet savvy or anything <laughs> right now, so, like, I'll post when I can, but, like, I also know where I'm at in the game. You know, I'm helping people. I'm wrestling, doing the best I can to be a good hand, and that's why, you know, I just love this business. I love being around my friends, and I love being around, uh, being around the people in it. You know, it's yeah. my crew. And that's enough. That I feel that same same way. You know, that's enough right there. Just being around the people. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like I'm very realistic about my end game here, and it's probably not going to be, you know, in W. Uh, definitely not going to be in WWE. But it's probably not going to be an AEW. You know, I'm cool. I'm cool doing what I do here and uh, just traveling and getting these experiences under my belt because I was actually having a conversation with one of the guys about, like, if, if I would have never tried this, I would've, if I would have never done this, then I would have hated myself for the rest of my life. Like, it's the one thing I've always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm able to do it. Like, I could stop tomorrow and say, hey, I was a pro wrestler for four years, you know? And that's... That means a lot to me. It's my dream. And a lot of people don't get to follow their dreams. And I, I was very, very fortunate to have the support and uh, make it happen. You know, I never wanted to be anything more than an independent wrestler. When I came up, it was Adam Cole. It was Kevin Owens. It was Sami Zayn um, all killing it on the indies. And they made it look cool. You know, right. they, they made it look like, wow, I want to do that. That sounds almost better than going to the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that died off a little bit somewhere along the way, but like, that's how I want to live. Like how they were doing it. Like just get, you know, that's fine. For me. sure. And you, were... of... what's that? Oh, I'm go ahead. You had a thought to finish. No, it's just kind of a lost thing. Like if you're an independent wrestler, like it's not looked upon as when those guys were killing it in the Indies. Like, I wish it would get back to that, you know, for the people, the hard workers, the people that are traveling, wrestling in front of 25 people then a thousand people you know just yeah rest wherever they can just to get it in you don't feel it's that way anymore uh in certain for certain people for sure uh, yeah I, I definitely think it is but you know it's just um it's like i don't know i just listen to a lot of like those podcasts from before and just i watched a lot of their work when i was growing up and they just made it feel like so cool to be like grinding and trying to do everything you can and like nowadays it's just like oh i won't wrestle in front of 25 people like i'll wrestle in front of five people if they're paying and they want to see i just want to you know if these got if these people are paying their hard-earned money to go see a show with some idiot yelling at them then i'm gonna put on a show for them you've even been dipping into the no ring stuff haven't you yeah um MV has no ring shows. Uh, I think he's having one this weekend. I'm not sure. I have to check with him on that, actually. But they're down in Spirit Lodge in Pittsburgh. Um, they're bar shows. They're very cool. Um, oh, they're fun. I'd suggest any fan to go out and check those out because they uh very interactive with the fans. And it's some, a different side of wrestling you get to see. Some people frown upon it, whatever. Um, I think it's just, you know more eyes on wrestling i don't care yep. where you're wrestling. if you get more eyes on it like most of the people that come to that spirit show down in pittsburgh the no ring they uh they've never seen wrestling before in their life and exactly the yep that maybe they they say oh i'm gonna turn on the tv and see what you know that wrestling's like and then they fall they fall in love with deathmatch wrestling or something they start coming to rsw shows like who knows and yep. that does happen all the time I've been saying the same thing. It's bringing in a completely different audience. Like Negative Outlook, Evil Ways, they have punk bands. So a lot of those kids are going to see the punk bands, and boom, they're seeing this crazy stuff. And I hear them talking after the shows. And, man, I love independent wrestling now. I hear them. It's yeah. awesome. It's definitely getting that punk vibe. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least. I think MV helped start that, especially with the punk bands that he has coming to his shows and stuff. Right. Uh, it's getting that vibe where like it's an underground scene, which I love. I think yeah. it's like, I think what MV's created and what Cole over at 
Evil Ways is creating is mm-hmm. so cool. Um, and uh, I just am happy to be a part of it whenever I can, you know. Uh, sure. I love I love the punk thing, and uh, I think it's really, really cool. No doubt. It's, it's like the rowdiest, nicest people. It's so cool. Yeah, they are. They are the <laughs> nicest people in the world, but they're crazy, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good Absolutely. time. It's similar to the Fuzz Fest thing. We had a good time there. Some of the craziest people, but they're all so freaking nice. That was a wild weekend. What can you tell the folks about your Fuzz Fest experience? Oh, man. Um, that was the show after Bray Wyatt died. Terry yeah. Funk. Um, that was tough, man. The Bray Wyatt thing hit me hard. I think it hit a lot of people hard, especially in the RSW locker room. Yeah. Uh, he was such an influence on me. My gear's made by the same person who makes his gear, who wow. made his gear. Um, you know, he's a big influence on me. And I know the guy who wrestled Brother Duzan. Yeah. For Eric, and, uh, you know, that was a, that was very cool for me to wrestle him because that was, that was, that hurt him pretty hard. And uh, we put on a hell of a match. And I think, you know, yeah, he, he was very happy with it, and, you know, and uh, I can't wait, wait to see what that kid does. He's a great kid. He listens well, um, and he takes a, a hell of a bump. <laughs> no doubt. I'm super proud of these, and we all are. And you guys put on a banger. That was a fun match. Yeah, I hope the people liked it. I hope he liked it. And, uh, you know, I kicked the shit out of him, but he ended up ended up coming, on top, coming out on top somehow, so whatever. Uh- Okay. Did you end up finding any new rock and roll bands you liked at the show? Um, I'm into them all. My buddy actually was playing it down there, so I saw them. Um, they were part of like a film thing, but I, yeah, I saw them. Um, definitely not like my type of music, but no. I, okay. You know, I love the people there. Like that. That's my type of people. Just like I'm too old, man. I can't handle all these fucking loud ass shit (laughs) a lot of it was too much i mean it's it's, some people like it a lot of people like it obviously but like uh, i get headaches bro (laughs) (laughs) no doubt hey something i wanted to touch on that you mentioned earlier uh you was talking about just going to these shows even if you're not booked for the networking of it all and i'm so so behind that and i'm always preaching that too Sell to these kids that aren't doing that. Give them an example of a time you went to a show, you weren't booked, but because of the network you did at that show, something good happened for you. I mean, dude, uh, so for me, like, and for a lot of people, like, I'm not super jacked. I'm not, like, I'm not some guy that's just going to put up a poster board and people are going to say, oh, yeah, I want to book that guy. Mm-hmm. Just because of physique or whatever. So, like, a lot of people on the independent scene have to go at a different angle and for me it was going to shows meeting the promoter saying give me a chance but when you get that chance you got to blow it out of the water you got to be good at what you do too Um, so if you that's how i made any relationships that's how i still get my matches sometimes you know i was able to get good relations with rsw 880 um voltage uh, that's a perfect example voltage i went to when i just got back Mm-hmm. And I had one match. I just showed up with Saad and Cal, both of them. They were already booked. And uh, I had one match. And the guy was like, okay, okay. He gave me another match. And he was like, hell yeah, you're on the roster. So now I'm a permanent member of that roster. Nice. So I showed up and I showed out. And that's what you got to do. Like, be prepared for sure when you go on these things that they're going to give you a match. And you got to be prepared to have a good fucking match. But if you don't go for some of these guys, then you're not going to expand in the wrestling business. Like for, for me, at least like I don't have, like I said, I don't have a six pack. I don't have all this shit. So I have to get out there and grind. And, um, that, I think a lot of people, you know, if they want to, it, it really depends. And this is something that Lee Moriarty, Lee Moriarty taught me once is, you know, whatever people want to do with wrestling, that's up to them. Right. You know, I'm comfortable doing what I'm doing, traveling, you know, getting these new shows, doing, putting in the work, because that's what I like to do. Some people like to wrestle once a month. Do it, dude. I'm not going to judge you if that's what you like to do. Um, some people, the people that piss me off are the people that say they want to go somewhere and do all this stuff, and they're not grinding and trying to do it. Right. Um, and that doesn't even piss me off either, to be honest with you. It's their choice. It's what they got to do. But if you're coming to me asking for advice, 
I'm going to say get on the road, learn how to wrestle, and uh, just get your name out there. But, like, again, some people are just comfortable working for one or two companies, and that's perfectly fine. I have no problem with that. If that's what you want to do with wrestling, go ahead. And that's awesome. You know, you're still a pro wrestler. You're still a friend in my book. But um, don't come asking me for advice when you're not willing to put in the work. I feel it. I feel it. And you've put in the work. Yeah, and that might be harsh to some people, but, man, I I don't want to sound harsh either. You know, I'm not a dickhead. And, you know, I am a dickhead, but I... <laughs> You're not you know, a dickhead, but you play one on TV. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, like, I don't want to sound harsh to people for that reason, but, like, I, if you're serious about this and you want to, like, do this indie thing and be, a, you know, traveling indie wrestler, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of miles. It's uh, not always fun, you know. It's not always easy, but it's uh, it's an experience of a lifetime. We get to live out our dreams. So, if you want to go that route, always hit me up. If you don't, then keep doing what you're doing. Like I, I love anybody that's wrestling. I think it takes heart. Um, even if you're doing one show a month, I don't care. If you're happy with that, you're happy, and you're using wrestling for what it's worth, and that's to make people happy. Yeah, and there there is all different types. There is those folks that just want to do the one or two shows a month. I I get what you were saying. Don't be bitching that you should be in bigger and better places when you're not putting in the work. Exactly. That's all I'm saying, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I feel like I should be in bigger and better places, but I also blame that on me. I don't go – I don't play this politics game with promoters and stuff like that, like, If they feel I deserve it, then I deserve it. If they don't, then I don't think I deserve it. And that's just me coming up from playing baseball, playing sports all my life is like, you have to be good to be a starter. You have to be good to be, you know, to do these things. I feel like I am good, but there's a lot more that I don't really buy into, which is my problem because I should. Um, (laughs) Like the social media and everything, I got to start doing that. Like, and uh, that's part of the game. And I just gotta, you know, face facts and realize that. But I'm, I, I'm cool with being just a good wrestler, you know. And and you're killing it. Well, let's think about this social media. What I liked was uh, giving them the business with Jeremy Colbert. You had a little web series going on. It was fun. So, yeah. so how could we do something like that now with Jace Carr? I think that's totally possible. Um, I gotta figure out how to do that. I I want to get back. Want to get into commentating too. Hell yeah. Uh, I, that would be a great avenue for me, but giving the business was fun, and uh, I think I could bring that back for sure. Um, depends on people want it or not, you know. Uh, maybe I'll release an episode soon. That's a good idea, because uh, I got to get back out there on social media somehow. There you go, and there's plenty of people to talk shit on. And once you get into that zone, it's 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 gold in my book, man. Like it, yeah. it was fun stuff. And I think VCW, you know, is really going to give me an opportunity to talk. And yeah, come out doing promos every match so i'm gonna i'm gonna get some stuff off my chest there for sure so that's something to tune into i think hell yeah what can you tell the folks about working for beast man uh beast man's amazing dude i've never i never really had a relationship with him before i came back and Mm -hmm. like when i when i came back he like he's for some reason like he just supported me he was like one of my guys now like hell yeah I, I, i honestly didn't talk to him before all this and like when i came back it's like he wanted to give me a chance you know oh yeah he gave me a chance and uh you know i'm a he made it's another deal just like voltage like i came up i showed out a couple times and now i'm a member of the the uh roster and i'm gonna he has plans for me and you know i think he's a great guy i think he's somebody that's you know uh underrated as well in this business for sure should be on TV, should be somewhere, but what a, like, what the definition of a good brother right there. For sure. Uh, you know how things went Sunday up there, just how he runs things and everything. What a good dude. Props yeah. to Beast Man. He's got a great thing going on at BCW, and I hope it continues to grow, and I hope to uh, definitely grow with it, you know. Hell yeah. Are you watching any other products around the area or on an indie level? Yeah, I always watch stuff. Uh, what are you liking? Uh, I like IWC always. I think for sure. Product Rise, in my opinion, is the biggest promotion in Pittsburgh right now, which is amazing. Yeah, 
uh, cowpoke breathing on the top of that is so cool. Um, I would love to, you know, I, I worked for Rise a couple times. It's a great promotion. I, I, you know, I'm not necessarily, you know, interested. I, I think what they're doing right now is awesome. And I'm just enjoying being a fan of that and seeing all these guys rise to the top. There's Cowpoke, Hendrix, uh, Alexander Kahn's another good one. Yeah. I don't know it's called the Great Alexander or whatever. Um, you know, they're all coming up there and uh, they're doing great, man. I love to see it. Don't we have uh, Cowpoke and Connor coming up up there? Yeah, next month, or I think it's this Saturday, actually. They're having a big show. Oh, wow. Show. Yeah, this Saturday, so tune into that. That's going to be a great show. Um, oh, insane. Absolutely. I think Hedricks is actually double-shotting. He's going to RSW with us and then going down to Rise, so that kid's a freaking worker. Hell yeah, Hendrix. Cool. Yeah. Props to you, man. No doubt, because, yeah, those, I mean, they're spread out enough. That's It's going to be hell making them both. Yeah, I mean he's gonna have to work. he's gonna have to drive pretty fast, but he'll be alright. He's gonna be a long day. Oh yeah, yeah, he's yeah, for sure. Especially yeah, working rise and RSW have fun with that. Yeah, he's a good kid. He'll he'll be alright. Oh yeah, and getting in those reps by goodness. And man, he just he came up so fast too. Like he's been a, a rocket. Yeah, he's he's like a sponge, man. He was just at AEW in Chicago. I saw Thursday. that, yeah. Yeah, he's just killing every opportunity that's given to him, and uh, that's what you got to do. The kid's going to go go places, that's for sure. No doubt. Are you watching any TV wrestling? Um, Not really, man. I haven't watched TV wrestling. I keep up with it, for sure, on like Instagram and stuff. Right. So I know what's going on. Uh, the AAW, or AEW thing in London looked pretty cool. Yeah, it was um, fun. But, you know... I, 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 I don't know. I don't have time to watch that stuff. <laughs> I, I really don't. Um, but it, it seems cool. It seems like, you know, the Roman Reigns thing and everything going on. It's cool to see all those a AEW guys kind of do their thing, like Adam Cole and everything being the main event of the biggest pay-per-view ever, I think. Yeah. The biggest show ever. That's pretty wild because he came up, if you listen to some of the stuff in the he came up like us. Like he was wrestling, he said he wrestled in front of five people before. Um, so he came up just like we did, and now he's doing that. It's pretty insane. Yeah, and I think recently, like it's being proven over and over, like it's never too late. You never know when it might catch on. What what kind of examples can you think of that? Um, anybody in AEW, they they're almost like all. Like MJF said, either a big pile of degenerates that just like right. kind of squeak, squeak their way through. Way through. Um, CM Punk, like I was always a CM Punk fan, um, but like the way he got through the WWE cracks somehow, like that guy was not supposed to be in WWE to begin with, you know? If right. You look at him, he's just not their guy. Um, but he ended up squeaking through, and it just goes to show that like the people on the independents like they're they could do stuff in wwe and they of course aew um but you just got to give them the right opportunity and you know they're all over it it's uh cm punk's probably the best example i would say that that guy's done some insane things for being just like an indie guy wrestling yeah. out his backyard to start you know um he's really an inspiration but i don't know what's going on with him now uh, whatever. Yeah. It's well, not our story to tell either. I hate when like people on Facebook are trying to like decipher what's going on. We don't know what happened. We don't know whose side is which. You right. Know, we don't work for that company, so don't make any judgments on either side because we don't know what the fuck happened. Nope. Good. And, uh, good way I, of putting it. Yeah. You just you know. That goes with anything in wrestling, I think, and even on our level. Like, I was judged for some things that I did. And, you know, fucking mental health, addiction, all that stuff's real, dude. Like, right. It, I think everybody in the world needs to be more aware of that, especially in wrestling, you know. The wear and tear we put on our bodies and our brains is no joke. And uh, some people snap. <laughs> I've been there. It happens. It happens. Do you think there's more awareness of that now, or do you think it's just the same same way it's always been? I, th I don't know, man. I think the mental health thing is getting getting there. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as addiction goes, man, the, uh, everywhere treats addicts and alcoholics like shit and talks about them like shit. Like, yeah, it's unfortunate. There's a, uh, there's, it's just like it's one of those things where like in 20 years it might be different, but right now it's like they're just peons. That's <laughs> that's how they're treated. Like, and uh, I'm friends with a lot of addicts. My girlfriend as well. You know, she. She's been through it. I, all my friends have been there, or ha- all of anybody's friends. You know, you know somebody that's been an addict, and when it's somebody close to you, it's like, oh, what can I do to help? But when it's somebody else, you call them the crackhead, or the meth head, whatever. Um, and I'll call it like you, it just needs to change in general. Right. Uh, but that's one of those things, man. Uh, because we do put it on ourselves as alcoholics. Like I did make the mistakes, but man. It's a disease, and like it's no, no joke. That's for sure. And I mean, look at some of the greats: Eddie Guerrero, uh, Shawn Michaels, Scott Hall, Jeff yeah. Hardy. I mean, you know, same yeah, same deal, all, man. We're human. Yeah, and the, the, the fucked up part about that is like it's all fun and games and everything until somebody dies. Like right. we we can call them a drug addict. We can look down upon them until they end up suffering and dying from this problem, then it's a memorial service. It's this and that. It's like, oh my God, he had a problem. Call this hotline, blah, blah, blah. Like, why the fuck weren't we doing that when we knew he had a problem or she had a problem? You know what I mean? Yeah. Why were we trying to help when we knew that, not looking down upon them and, you know, doing bullshit and, like, kind of mocking them. Like, especially with Jeff Hardy. He's a perfect example. If something were to happen where he died on, and Praise God that does not happen, but this is just an example. Like, it would be horrible. It would be this horrible thing, but, like, he gets a DUI, and it's all in the tabloids, like, oh, he's a scumbag, blah, 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 blah. Like, no, that's not how we treat people. Right. You know? And that's something I'm very passionate about, but, like, dude, it's that's something that needs to change. Not, not in wrestling, necessarily, but just in general in the world. For sure, in general in the world, but I see it being harder in wrestling because of the culture, of the secrecy, of it's always been look out for your brother, and you know, yeah. if he, you guys are in a motel room, you you flush the coke for him if the cops come, or whatever, you know? Right, for sure. Uh, so they look at it as looking out when they're leaving it alone, you know? Yeah, I mean, I get it, too, like, I've been around that. I've never really dabbled in drugs or anything, but I've definitely been around it, and um, it's one of those things, man. It's super tough, but, like, if anybody has an issue or something, and you know, like, if you have an issue, like, I've had them, obviously, is, like, you know deep down you do, and you just want to talk to somebody, please hit me up, hit any, hit somebody up that you know, like, yeah. or look up to, whatever it may be, because, like, that's what helped me in the long run, like, just admitting it and, like, moving on with my life, and uh, it's so much better just to, like, figure it out than to keep doing it and doing it and doing it until something horrible happens and that's what you know that's how the story's told no doubt and even if nothing horrible ever happens you're still not progressing and doing what you want to do you know exactly exactly and that's why i think it needs to be cut in the butt you know uh before and i don't think there needs to be any shaming about like especially i mean it's not going to happen to us but like the guy the big time guys like jeff hardy is a perfect example right you know, the, put them in the tabloids and stuff saying this, that, the other, look how drunk he is, uh, fuck this guy. Like, no, dude, the guy's suffering. He's struggling. And right. uh, he do everything we can to help, you know? Yeah. And when he's talking about the culture of wrestling, I mean, alcohol, like, I don't even drink, but when I'm at one of the shows, I, I'm drinking because everybody else is and having a good time, so. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. That gets tough sometimes, and, you know, uh, I'm fortunate enough to to hang around some guys that really respect the fact that I don't drink. Good. Even if I wanted to drink, those guys would not let me. Really? Yeah, there's no chance. Um, People have bought shots from me before, Mm. and I got my boy Cowpoke there to take them for me. Yeah, he'll take them, right? (laughs) You got to figure it out. Yeah, if you take cowpoke, you don't. Yeah, you're not getting any alcohol. He'll take care exactly. of it. And he he has my back 100. percent He won't. He would kick my ass, or at least try to, uh, <laughs> if I if I drank at all. So it's good to be on the road with your actual friends that care about you. That's for sure. 
Yeah, it sounds like you got some good folks around you. Good for you, man. Absolutely. What can we look forward to in the future? What's the plans? The immediate fl- plans, the five months from now? What What do we think? I don't know, man. Uh, there's going to be a lot changing for me personally um, as far as where I'm living, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually in Williamsport, PA right now. That's where I'm living during the week. Okay. Um, not in Pittsburgh anymore. Uh, me, me and my girlfriend have a place up here, and uh, we're trying to, you know, settle down. And uh, what what that what happens with wrestling, we'll see. Um, I'm definitely gonna still be wrestling. I mean, that's a fact. But we'll see what you know. I'm getting old, man. <laughs> so, you know, I got to do what makes me happy, and wrestling is 100% a part of that picture. But also, you know starting a family being you know getting this thing rolling and just uh being happy with my life and right and today i'm happy you know so uh, everything's going well and if i keep wrestling i think that's very healthy for me as well for sure for sure i wish you the best with the family and everything man i tell you that's a life changer and i'm sure sure you're half aware at least yeah yeah (laughs) i'm we're pretty happy right now and you know uh just uh getting everything rolling in the right direction. It's going to be a process. Um, you know, I've been in the corporate world before wrestling and I made a bunch of money before and I, I held very high positions in companies and I don't think I want to go back to something like that. You know, I want to do something I love, but um, wrestling's 100% a part of my future. I know that for sure. Good. Hell yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we've been kind of heavy. We've kind of pulled on the heartstrings a little bit. <laughs> Let's lighten it up. Folks love a good crazy road story or a good backstage story, in-ring story. Give us give us a crazy tale. Jesus Christ, I don't know what I can tell. Yeah, uh, man, it gets everybody. I know. You don't have to name names. There's definitely something that I cannot tell on the podcast. Pretty right. much all. But I would say, you know, anytime I'm traveling with Calpo Paul, Jason Hendricks, and Facade in the car, uh-huh. It, something's going to happen that's really funny. Um, strip clubs are always a part of it, you know. Right. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend's in here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, there. Something always happens. They're always fun, and you know, we we never really do anything bad. To be honest with you, we're yeah, especially me being sober. I'm kind of taking the reins and keeping them under control. Besides facade sober as well so he doesn't really do anything so we got a good crew to you know the young guys can party it up and me and facade kind of lay back and watch them <laughs> so oh, okay well, it's good. Always pretty, they always have stories you know but uh they're good kids they they really are and we wouldn't be with them if they weren't you know uh some crazy stories uh i would say anytime me and poke really too uh, mm. we're a good crew me, Pope, Hendrix, all those guys, you know, anybody that travels with us is anybody that I travel with is awesome. Remy's a great dude too. Yeah. Uh, you know, we got some stories, but they're, you know, I might have to save those. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. I tried. I tried. You gave us the gist. It's worth a shot. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. I, I hear you. Just... Yeah, man. I love the Pittsburgh crew. I love it when they come down to West Virginia shows. I'm glad they're a part of VCW now. Tim's always mixed them up with RSW. Here, here, okay, let's flip it the script. What about some West Virginia guys you could take to Pittsburgh? Who would you bring up Ooh. to Pittsburgh to show off? I love all those guys, man. At R- RSW, they're all good. Uh, Duzan is. Duzan, there's a spot for him somewhere because, like, his bumps are insane. Right. Him and MB Young, him and MB Young might be a dream match for me. Oh wow! I never <laughs> knew I needed it. Yeah, let's let's go. Yeah, we need to make that happen. Uh, Tim might MB be Young. able to put that on pay per view. Shit. Shoot, that would <laughs> I would pay to watch that. <laughs> no doubt, I would too. I really, really would. <laughs> um, but you know, any of those guys, dude. They, uh, the Applebee's boys. Yeah, they, Saturday Night good. Special. Yeah, Saturday Night Special. They're great, man. Good guys, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, all those guys in the locker room, even the young guys that are coming up, they listen, dude. Like, it's, there's a lot of guys with egos in this business, but everybody in the RSW locker room has theirs checked. That's for sure, because like they, they're just respectful. 
and that's all I ask. That's all I want to be a part of is people that are respectful and not me, you know, yeah. don't have massive egos to fill the room, um, which you will get from time to time. But fortunately, I haven't ran into it that much. Same, same. Yeah, like you say, RSW is just a big family. The guys just want to have fun, man. Yeah, and that's all it is. That's why I love working there, you know. Um, it's a great place to be, great great people, just good fun. Every show is good fun. Yeah, and always a solid product. We got the weekly show. I think uh, I think I snuck you in the last episode, you and Butchie B. That was a fun match. Oh, man. That was one of my, honestly, one of my favorite matches of all time. Really? Uh, of my whole career, man. He, that kid's good, and he was there every step of the way. Um, I hate watching my matches back because I'm so critical of myself, but that might be one I watch back because I just had a really good time with him. That kid did not, you know, he's a high-flying dude, but mm -hmm. we were able to put on a match where he stayed on the ground and he still performed. You know, people were on his side 100%. They hated me. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, we are able to have a good fucking wrestling match with that kid. And uh, he's going to be, I, I, I can see some things happening with him. It's the first time I met him. Um, but he's good, man. We had a, That was one of my favorite matches by far, yeah. Hell yeah. He impressed the hell out of me. I was going through, I was like, what should I use? And I watched that match, the hard cam of it, and I was like, wow, that's a damn good match. Yeah, we had a very solid match, man. That guy can go, and he listened every step of the way. And, uh, you know, we just, we had chemistry, for sure. Yeah, we might have to run it back sometime. I'm totally down for that anytime. Yeah, heck yeah. Have you considered working any of the Parma shows that we do? I don't even know what that is. Okay. We run this town <laughs> outside of Cleveland, Parma, Ohio. Usually oh, Tim yeah, yeah, the yeah, Ohio yeah. guys, but Yeah, you know. I'm down to go wherever with RSW. I think Tim knows that. You know, he uh I told him I'm available for him for the rest of the year for sure and we'll see, you know, what happens next year. But this year I'm RSW all the way. So like whatever he needs from me, I'm there, brother. Sweet. Glad to have it. Sure. Good to hear. Good to hear. That means we got some good footage coming up. Yeah, man, I hope so. I hope so. I hope we start doing some backstage stuff and uh, get this thing rolling, for sure. I'll call you guys do a great job, too. Uh, the camera, the production, and everything like that. It's really starting to step up its game. Thank and you. It's good to see. Yeah, that's that's all me. I'll take all the praise, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Hell yeah. We're in the final 10 minutes, my man. In the final 10 minutes, I tell all my guests or ask them. I would never tell you to do anything. But I ask you <laughs> if you could give any words of wisdom. Uh, of course, put your socials out there, any merch, anything you want to sell. You're not a big internet guy, so you're probably not worried about <laughs> the socials. But whatever you want to put out there, my man. Yeah, man. Um, just catch me coming to RSW wherever wherever I'm coming to. You know, I, put, I do put it out on my Instagram which is uh, at Jace or something. Okay, <laughs> um, I like it. And, you know, you, you can see where I'm at every step of the way. Um, like this weekend, I got Voltage Friday and RSW Saturday. Nice. And maybe something Sunday. I'm not sure yet. So okay. I'll definitely post that on my Instagram, but I let everybody know what I'm doing on the weekend. If there's merch, if you're giving them the business is coming back, you'll know about it through Instagram. So check that out. Um, I appreciate you know everything you do. I appreciate me having you me, appreciate you having me on the show. Uh, as far as advice for people, like it, I think I've given some, but like don't. Again, I'm not the freaking master of this by any means. So like, take my advice with a grain of salt. But like, um, I do have some like good stuff. If you are interested in learning some stuff that you know, I have. Everybody has a different opinion on wrestling. Right. Um, Vanilla ice cream is just as good as chocolate ice cream to me. So, like, I like all flavors of wrestling. Yep. And, and uh, you know, just because something's a different flavor doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, so that's why, like, I'm not by any means the end-all, be-all of advice, dude. I, I, <laughs> know, I don't even know the tip of the iceberg. Um, I don't know much but i do know some things so like if you need help if you need a second opinion on something please feel free to reach out um because uh, you know i i learn something new every single day from For sure time, from just talking talking to my friends and talking to new people in the locker rooms and stuff they teach me 
and I, I love taking advice, man. That's my biggest thing is like just taking advice from people and learning more about this sport, about this business, because it, uh, I think yeah, you'll never actually figure it out. That's the thing. It's constantly changing. And uh, just because I have an opinion on something doesn't mean somebody else might have a better better opinion that works better for you. Right. You know? So uh, take everything that I say, you know, all I really care about is if people work hard, if they're trying to get somewhere. And uh, that's it pays off in dividends for sure. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. I've been saying that myself recently. Like, just put in the work, and I promise you, it'll it'll love you back. Yeah, especially these young kids that, you know, uh, have this opportunity to kids that are starting at 20, 20 years old, 21 years old. Jesus Christ, you guys have the most potential in the world. Right. right? You, you go anywhere you want to, uh, even if you're in good shape, bad shape, whatever it is, like, you can get in shape. And believe me, I've talked to top guys. I've talked to different guys. I've talked to guys in WWE, AEW. Physique is a thing. Like, <laughs> I don't have the best physique, and I know that. But, like, they look at that, man. And they look at your gear, and they look at your entrance, and they look at your character. Um, unfortunately, wrestling is probably the last thing the big guys look at right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because they can teach you. As long as you're taking care of yourself, you look good. Um, it's a very big thing. For the young guys, it's a huge piece of advice is getting to the gym, um, even though I don't even take that advice for myself, but I'm too lazy. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're an honest man. Uh, if, yeah. You know? Yeah, man. I just, yeah, I just want the best for these kids, to be honest with you. And if they, if that's what they need to hear, then hopefully they can get in the gym and get in shape and, like, as long as you're a decent wrestler, man, you guys can do whatever you want with this business. Like, you guys have years and years and years and years. It's crazy. Yeah. So happy. So cool to see that, man. I love when kids start young and they, they're eager to really get going. It's very cool. And it's really cool right now the way things are evolving anyway. If we can foster those kids in the right direction, just imagine what wrestling will be like in 10 or 20 years. Oh, my God. It's awesome to think about. Awesome can't yeah, wait cannot wait especially in the pittsburgh west virginia uh this area man yeah um, there's a lot of young talent that's ready to go and very eager and very uh you know they're they're working hard everybody's yeah. working hard and it's good to see very we, good to see we mentioned a lot of names uh brotherly love i want to throw them out there i know like, those guys are gonna be stars those guys are awesome dude and again young kids that you know are already excelling in this business and uh and they're good good people too i yep. uh, love hanging out with them and uh i don't have any complaints about anybody in any locker room right now to be honest with you everybody is super cool everybody's super chill and uh everybody's working hard and it, you love to see it yeah we're in a good place i think that's a good ending point a happy ending for the story absolutely man <laughs> I'll ask you to hang on the line with me, my man. But uh, for the listeners, you know how we do it. Treat each other with kindness and respect. Go out there and live your dreams. You can be doing it like me and Jace Carr. It's a good time, I promise you. We'll catch you the next go-round. We love you. See you, guys. See y'all.